Hi everybody, Jason here. Today we have another episode of Ask Jason. Now if you're new to the channel, Ask Jason is a video series where I answer your questions about spirituality. Now today we have a great question from Harry. And this is something actually a lot of people have mentioned to me in the comments section. They've had concerns about this particular attitude that some people have with spirituality. And so Harry asks me, what is the Taoist view on virtue signaling? I see a lot of people who say they are spiritual doing this. That attitude doesn't seem spiritual to me. I even see people on your channel playing this game. Can you explain why people do this? Yes, I can, Harry. Yes, I can. And yes, I have noticed this on my channel as well, that there are some people who just cannot help themselves and they virtue signal. Now, you are right to assume that it is not spiritual because it is not spiritual. And we'll get into why it isn't, right? So to understand the Taoist view of virtue signaling, or even just the general Eastern spiritual perspective of virtue signaling, we have to realize why one would virtue signal. Now, in the modern day, a lot of people are in this habit of virtue signaling, and it's usually coupled with identity politics. And so when you're in this sort of game of one-upsmanship, like you're trying to sound more profound or you're trying to be more moral than someone else, this is essentially anti-spiritual because you've automatically lost your humility and you are trying to kind of force your worldview upon other people. And as we know with Eastern spirituality, it's about the dissolution of the self. It has nothing to do with identity politics. Now, the reason why a lot of people are engaged in identity politics and become virtue signalers is it's based on a survival strategy. And you can see this throughout history, right? This strategy has been implemented all throughout history to try and get a leg up over people, essentially to undermine certain groups of people, to get ahead and to kind of play the victim a little bit, right? And so virtue signaling can be linked to playing the victim. Like you start to signal like, oh, what about this, or what about that, and oh, he's not vegetarian, and so forth and so on. You're trying to drag people down unintelligently because you have a certain view of the world. Now, if you have a certain view of the world, that doesn't mean it is the view of the world, right? There is such a thing called diversity in life, and on the spiritual path, you have to understand that diversity is a beautiful thing. But understanding unity through diversity, you get a greater sense of oneness within this diversity. And so virtual signaling is, again, usually from this survival strategy. It's about trying to promote your own sense of morality or your own sense of spirituality or what have you, or politics on other people. So it's, it's very forceful, right? It's very forceful. And so, as you said, it doesn't seem spiritual to you because it's not spiritual. It's not. It's a game of one-upsmanship. And instantly when you're in a game of one-upsmanship, you've lost your center, right? I don't really understand this tendency people have to see things online and react emotionally or to virtue signal because you're instantly not spiritual because you essentially have lost your mind and you are reacting emotionally. And so that's a big problem. We don't need more of that in the world. That's already all throughout history, all of the conflict and troubles we've had in the world comes from that state of mind, not from the peaceful state of mind. So if you want to essentially come back into your own spiritual nature, then you have to stop reacting emotionally to each and everything. For myself, if I watch something on YouTube, for example, and it's not my cup of tea, I just turn it off or go to something else that I might want to search for. It's that easy. I mean, there's no need to, you know, to get all angry and bend out of shape about it. I don't really understand that. From a spiritual perspective for yourself, Harry, and everyone that is listening and watching, we have to just observe that sort of tendency also objectively because you don't know what sort of place that that person is in their life. They obviously are in a place of insecurity because they feel the need to virtue signal. They need to play this game of spiritual one-upsmanship over other people and try to belittle and demean other people instead of like seeing someone else's viewpoint which would be the Taoist perspective, right, is to see the other person's viewpoint and to understand them, truthfully understand them, not understand them through your perspective, but understand their place in the world as opposed to your place in the world. You can still stay in your place in the world, but you don't have to superimpose or project your own beliefs onto them. 
So see, this is the thing, right? Taoism is not about projecting your own beliefs and superimposing your own belief system on anyone. It's a path of non-interference. So virtue signaling instantly is a path of interference. It's almost like a new version of Christianity. That's what happened with woke culture, right? Woke culture became this whole new version of Christianity where people are going around telling people how to think, how they should behave, the attitudes they should have. It sounds like what happened when Christianity went around the world and transformed foreign cultures and belief systems. It's the same, right? We see this with woke culture. Woke culture is big on identity politics and virtue signaling, which is about getting everyone to play their game. See, it's a survival strategy. It's like demographic swamping, right? Demographic swamping is about getting others to play your game, to think how you think, to promote your agenda. We're so fearful when other people think differently or other people have different beliefs. We have a lot of fear for that. Who knows why? But if you're one of those, the spiritual path is about eradicating that sort of fear. And we're talking about Taoism here. It's about accepting everyone in the world and their belief systems. You tolerate them because you love them, not because you know you have to, because you appreciate who they are. You appreciate that they bring diversity to the world and they bring different viewpoints. And you can see their culture for what it is as a beautiful part of the world right and so instead of trying to get other people to think as you think stop that game stop that game that is anti-spiritual and and we're talking about Taoism here it's anti-Taoist because Taoism is about allowing people to think as they think and not interfering with the world all of the problems in the world come from interference we're trying to play this game of I want you to think like me I want you to have the same beliefs And we see this immaturity within politics, with famous podcasters. We see this unconscious attitude being promoted from these sorts of people. And your responsibility is to become aware of that. And if you are interested in Taoism, it's about putting the brakes on that and ceasing this attitude of virtue signaling, this tendency people have to play one-upsmanship. A lot of people always ask me, how did you learn so much about Eastern philosophy? I shut my mouth and I learned and I listened without having any cultural or social conditioning conflicting with what I was learning. I wasn't going to the teachers and saying, I don't agree with that because of this or, you know, my opinion is this. And in Australia, we don't think like that. That would be ridiculous. First of all, the spiritual master kicks you straight out (laughs) of the temple or the monastery. You're gone because you need to get rid of opinions. See, the spiritual path is about eradicating opinions because opinions mean that you are still wound up tight. You are still operating from an ego, from a sense of identity, which doesn't exist. The identity has never existed. It's just the accumulation of your experiences in this world that created this sense of self that you think you are, this separate sense of self too. It's not connected with the world. And what happens within Eastern spirituality and with Taoism especially, when you begin to thin that self out, you begin to feel this greater sense of oneness. It's a feeling you have. You feel more unity with the world. It's an ultimate state of consciousness that can't be reached if we're operating from a separate self and we're operating from our opinions and our beliefs of how the world should be. But that's not actually how the world is. And so... That's what we all need to realize on the spiritual path. And so, Harry, I hope I answered your question as best as possible. And remember, everyone, these sorts of questions have a deep meaning for all of us. It's not just directed at one individual. They have a deep meaning for all of us to contemplate. And I hope that before you become a keyboard warrior or before you react emotionally online or with someone offline, pause and think about the place that you're operating from. Think about if you are trying to promote your own perspective of the world on others to keep yourself safe. Taoism is about letting go of that and walking into the wilderness of life to harness this state of consciousness, which Zhuangzi would call free and easy wandering. Shanti, shanti, shanti. Shanti.